Series 2, Tabernacle, Michigan, Lesson 1. The Tabernacle and the Messianic Believer. Shemot, Exodus 33:15. It is Yeshua, the Messianic King, and Emmanuel, who redeems the people Israel, whether in the garden where God sought out Adam and Hazar, Adam and Eve. Bereshit, Genesis 3:8. In the wilderness, Shemot, Exodus 13:21 or in the tabernacle of Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Malachim Aleph, 1 Kings 8, 1 to 11. It is Elohim as divine initiator who pursues covenant relationship with his creation, seeking to dwell with them. In creation to completion, Russell Resnick writes about God's presence with them and the construction of the tabernacle. Moses pleads with the Lord, If your presence doesn't go with us, don't make us go on from here. Shemot Exodus 33.15 Moses cannot envision Israel apart from the presence of Elohim in their midst. It is more important to him than the promised land and deliverance itself. Moses' plea for divine accompaniment reminds us that the presence of the Spirit is essential to us as well, beyond all that God tells us, vital as it is. We long for him simply to be with us. The presence of Elohim in the life of the believer demands a devoted and set-apart life. Thus, in drawing from the imaginary of the tabernacle, Shaul explains the one's physical body as literally the dwelling place, tabernacle, of the Spirit of God in one's life. 1 Corinthians 6.19 In Shemot, Exodus 40, 34-38, the manifestation of Elohim's presence with his people was revealed by a cloud covering the tent of meeting. Moshe was kept from entering it because the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. For this reason, the tabernacle is a, modern, is a model of God's willful habitation with his people. Elohim's desire has always been to make his habitation with his people. But as servants of the Most High, believers must likewise lead lives worthy of the gospel of Yeshua. Philippians 1, 27